welcome back to the everyday night i'm joe and i'm jeff and uh jeff what's yes, today sir. what is today's <laughs> olympic event uh uh well i think as of today i think we are done with the olympics are we not we are so but i i propose uh an olympic event in uh mixology <laughs> oh, all right uh that would be interesting but it would have to well subjective judging again yes or mixology so mixology dancing how about that oh how about full contact mixology yeah <laughs> there are actually bartender competitions with flair yeah. and all sorts yeah, of yeah. things uh <clears throat> yes but i i mentioned that because what we're going to talk about was is prompted by a commercial um that yes. nike's newest commercial ar around the olympics right it was um, running during the during the olympics yes, yes um and because the olympics and sports and competition are of interest to both of us and because i have had a career in advertising and in academia about advertising and have written about it i'm particularly interested in in this but it leads into a larger discussion about sportsmanship and yes. the olympics and fair play and all of that so um but before we begin the first question of the evening is as always is what always, are you drinking yes so what are you drinking oh oh <laughs> so i again have a spicy penicillin uh, ah. made with uh lieber and company's uh fiery ginger syrup uh scotch um <clears throat> honey syrup and and lemon juice and um <clears throat> i got a bit of a tickle in my throat and it seems uh appropriate so and uh i hope and, it cures your infection <laughs> it'll cure <laughs> something all right just or, hey you're still fighting that infection <laughs> <clears throat> well, uh, isn't it it homer simpson said alcohol the cause of and cure for all the world's <laughs> problems so uh -huh. and what are what are you imbibing this evening I just have on the rocks a an Iron Fish Distillery, um, <clears throat> whiskey straight bourbon whiskey, finished in maple syrup barrels. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's not as interesting as I had hoped. No. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's a yeah. it's a good straight bourbon whiskey, but I'm I'm not really getting as much maple or maple aftertaste as I had kind of hoped for. It, it's not. It doesn't doesn't present itself as a maple whiskey. Yeah. But I thought finished in a maple whiskey or a maple syrup barrel might lend it a little more something mapley. And I love maple flavored stuff, so I thought, ah, oh, worth a try. Yeah. yeah. Kind of a disappointment from from that point of view. But you can always doctor it with a little bit of maple whiskey. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, here's to you. So the first thing about this commercial, so this is a commercial from um, Whedon and Kennedy, which is Nike's longtime agency in Portland. They came up with Just Do It. They've been doing Nike's uh, advertising for a very long time. And Nike's advertising is usually terrific, inspirational, yeah. um, emotive, terrific stuff. <clears throat> they did... Um, I recall one they did that was a split screen between different sports. It was brilliantly edited. It was it was mm -hmm. absolutely fantastic. Um, this one um, is, I think, rightly meeting with a lot of derision online. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the link to it to uh the youtube uh to youtube to this commercial i'm going to put it in the comments if you want to watch it before our discussion discussion pause uh our our podcast here go click the link watch the commercial it's only a minute long 
and then come back and listen to our discussion of it. And I think that would make this more, it's this is kicking off the point uh, the, of the yeah. conversation. We're also going to go from that to talking about. Yeah, we'll, we'll quote the, the transcript right. and stuff. Yeah. So, this, and I, I okay, wanted to. So, mention, I'm going to pause now. And we're back. Okay. And we're back. <clears throat> well, boy, I barely had time to run and change my clothes. Right. So, so I didn't. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, now, we, I wanted to say I saw this. Uh, in the theater, oh. not not as part not as part of the um, Olympic coverage. Although I understood it was running at that point, so I kind of saw kind of a long form of it. Yeah, and that was my and I suggested we we speak about it because I was frankly appalled by it. Yes, um, I, I it's terrible. <laughs> it is terrible. It's narrated by Willem Dafoe. Um, who is a wonderful actor and is terrific at sounding absolutely creepy, which he does in this. Well, and most famous recently for playing villains. Yes. So it begins saying, am I a bad person? Right. Tell me, am I? And it goes on, I'm single-minded, I'm deceptive, I'm obsessive, I'm selfish. I have no empathy. I don't respect you. I'm irrational. I have zero remorse. I think I'm better than everyone else. I want to take what's yours and never give it back. What's mine is mine. What's yours is mine. Am I a yeah. bad person? And when I was seeing this in the theater, I was listening to all of this. And when it, as the, as the faded, I turned to my wife as who said, and I said, yes, yes, you are. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, yes. The answer to that question is yes, you are a bad person. <clears throat> so on screen, you see um, clips of professional athletes and Olympic athletes. Yes. And Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, uh, Serena Williams, Shikari Richardson, and, and others. And first of all, I wonder, I, I do wonder if they all knew, I, I mean, they're all sponsored by nike so oh. they have an agreement and their image can be used but i wonder if they knew it was going to be used in this way that would be and, interesting and the idea is i'm com so competitive and this is what it takes to make a champion and i say no bullshit that's what it yeah. takes to make a sociopath right. <laughs> yeah, you are a bad person yeah if, <clears throat> And we saw examples, at, we see examples in professional sports all the time, and yeah. even in college sports. Um, but we saw examples at the Olympics of unsportsmanlike conduct. And there is no, I think we talked about this once before, there isn't a, if there is a gender neutral term for unsportsmanlike or sportsmanlike please please suggest it if there is i'm not aware of one uh it's this particular kind of sense of fair play in sport i think right or fair play well it goes and it goes beyond fair play fair play is part of it yes yeah it also includes respect for your opponent and exactly and a certain amount of humility in your own accomplishment yes and there, there's a lot that goes into being sportsmanlike Yes. And, um, and this and this ad that we're talking about violated most of them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think the only thing it didn't mention is taunting. Yeah. Um, I despise taunting. But the whole but in, in sort yeah. of in context, the whole thing is a taunt. It is. Yes, it is. That's correct. Uh, exactly right. But there were examples of, of that and there are examples of that all the time in sport where you see taunting. Um, I I think the end zone dance, the celebrations, like an end, end zone dance, are a, a variation of that. Is that celebratory as a way of taunting almost? I And when you see them after every play. Yeah. I well, It's like you didn't, you okay, you tackled a guy. 
great. You know, it, it, there's still That's your job. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Congratulations. You met the bare minimum of your position. Yes. <laughs> I don't I don't like, for example, the way fencers will will there'll be some kind of activity and then they'll both rip off their masks and both scream like they've won. Just do your job. Stop right. it already. Yeah. But there are worse examples in like the um I think it was I forget which sport it was, but one of the guy maybe soccer or handball or something <laughs> where a guy scored and he went like this to the goalie, he went like this to the goalie or well, uh, and there's one was, where that was field hockey. Field hockey, okay. Yeah, uh, which is a weird thing. I, I, sorry, and this is maybe sexist, or whatever. But I saw I saw the article you're, that you're yeah, referencing yeah. here, and they talk about the hockey players. So I expected to, you know, get to the photos in the article and see ice and pads, yeah. and no, it's guys playing field hockey. With, I mean, traditionally, right? That was a women's sport, and yeah. Ice hockey was a men's sport. Now, I, I'm, I'm just saying that's a traditional thing. Yeah, I, women I, play ice hockey too. But, absolutely. Yeah. But my, it, it just, it was jarring to me that that it was jarring. It was unexpected for yeah. me to see the fighting going on in field <laughs> hockey. I, I mean, we come to expect it out of ice hockey. It's in the rules, for God's sake, which is something else I would. I. I don't, yeah, I don't agree with that either, that it's expected, it's in the rules. I remember uh, our friend Talamar, um, who said uh, he was talking about chivalry to, he was a teacher for a long time, talking about ideas of chivalry and fair play to his students. And he said, so you watch basketball and somebody fouls out and he gets a standing ovation from the crowd. He played so hard. He was trying so hard that he's fouled out of the game. So here's another way of thinking about it. He broke the rules so many times that they kicked him out of the game. Yes. that's a, Well, that's exactly. Yeah. That's what, in fact, happened. Exactly. And <clears throat> I know in, in our sport, sport our martial sport yeah. uh, medieval reenactment martial sport we would not tolerate the bad behavior that is commonplace in right. in more mainstream sports we simply wouldn't uh taunting or celebrating or saying bad things to other people or um i saw one a clip of someone in in a judo match and they they were doing something that got up and the one guy just as passing by just yanked on his opponent's gi to pull it out of place to just to to screw with him yeah it's like just you know don't that we we do in our sport some some psychological a certain amount of gamesmanship. Things, gamesmanship, but it's not disrespecting the right. other person. It is not that sort of thing. <clears throat> right. It's yeah, more that, like playing poker. In, yeah. in well, and particularly in, in a a well sportified martial art, the the even even considering disrespecting your opponent to me is is completely counter to what martial arts are supposed to be about. And and yet there were examples of that. Yeah. In, well, in, tai, in Taekwondo, which is a problem I the when the there were problems with judging, with officiating, with scoring, with and that is another level of of unsportsmanlike behavior from the officials and yeah. the organization and 
the response of that is that the coaches and the participants are responding with their own bad behavior. It's it it has the example has to be set and it's right. Yeah. Well, and we both remember like back in the eighties, it, it had become kind of a joke that the Russian judges, right? yes, they, they were giving, you know, fives and sixes to everybody, but their own athletes. Right. And uh, the, 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 um, the uh, woman boxer who there was such an uproar about her. She eventually won the gold. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> people erroneously claiming that she was transgender. Well, um, yeah. But that's because there's another organization, Russian organization, yep. that said that has been the olympic committee has said these are not credible people they this is not a viable governing body we don't accept anything they do because they will say well this person's disallowed this person's not right. female this person is you know whatever um well in fact if i'm I, and that's I might what, be wrong. Yeah. i remember if i'm remembering this correctly what i saw in an article was that she wasn't she was not banned from international competition by this Russian controlled board. She was dis she was disqualified after beating a Russian opponent. Yeah. So all the claims that well, she was, you know, the Russians wouldn't let her fight. No, the Russians did let her fight until she started winning and then they disqualified. Her. Yeah, exactly. It's a whole different thing. Yeah. So, um, yeah. <clears throat> so uh, I I think the o Olympic Committee has had certainly a share of problems over the years. The you know, Olympic organized the the governing body of the Olympics has had its share of issues. They've made progress, but they still have a ways to go. But the response to it um, of and maybe it's just specific athletes, but I think some teams are worse than others. Um, there is a, on the American basketball team, one of the players uh, is very good. Um, he, as he scored a basket and then he ran down the court, like made gesturing, like, Oh, the other team was asleep and he, they can, you know, it's like, why do that? You're already beating the crap out of them. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> It, it just makes you look petty and small. But this uh, is the kind of thing that we've tolerated in American sports, encouraged in American sports for decades now. Yes. And yes. No wonder it bleeds into amateur and Olympic sports. Well, Olympics are not exactly amateur anymore anyway. Um, yeah, okay. Well, we still have, we still have some... Uh, what was it? Two, was it 2004? The dream team where they, they said, well, the, the Olympic committee said, well, many of the Eastern countries yeah, they essentially pay. have professional athletes. Right. Well, that is all they, they don't earn money any other way. They are, right. they are housed and supported and paid and their families are supported because they're athletes. So we're going to let American professional athletes compete. Yeah. And, yeah a team of eight professional basketball players went to the Olympics and destroyed everything. Yes. Walked away with it. And that had been kind of a complaint for years that our professional players can't play. Right. But their players are professionals. Right. So, so the answer would have been, the other answer would have been, you know, don't make them professionals. Don't let the professionals who are not professionals but they're being paid play. The problem yeah. is um, there were limited, there are limited opportunities yes. for income in, in some countries. And how now do athletes aspiring to the Olympics in sports that don't really have much of a professional league to them, 
how do they support themselves while well, they're devoting every minute to their training? Right. So, and most of our most of the American teams are supported by large inter uh, um, international sporting goods companies. Right. So, Commercial sponsorship. Right. Yeah. So that's how we justify it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so there are examples of um, unsportsmanlike behavior. The, um, um, <clears throat> um, uh, well, there was, you uh, mentioned the Netherlands. Yeah, the hockey. The, the um, South Korean. Oh, that was the that was the field hockey. Yes. Team, the shushing. The Netherlands again versus Germany. Yeah. And then there was, um, I'm looking at the other one. There was, um, oh, the in Taekwondo, somebody, one of the, the um, competitors from Chile won, but the, it was reversed. Against give, a Cuban. Hmm? Against a Cuban, as I recall? No, against... Uh, uh, south uh, south korean oh yeah oh, i must be thinking of a different incident yeah okay. and um <clears throat> and um there have been ex oh and F france france so this is whenever when the french basketball team was playing the canadian team whenever a canadian was shooting a free throw the French fans would loudly boo. Well, that happens in that happens in professional basketball. Yeah. It would not have happened. I don't think it happens in college basketball, but I could be mistaken. I haven't been to a college basketball game well, in a, I don't know well, if it's I don't know if it's thinking. booing, but there's always there's always been a you know, vocalization trying to distract right. the shooter right. of the visiting team. That's that's ancient. I th yeah, I think uh, I don't like it. Uh, well, I don't like it either, but I also don't understand people who wear team jerseys to watch it on TV because they feel like they're supporting their team. I don't get that either. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I remember many, many, many years ago, uh, when Jimmy Connors was the now retired professional tennis player, was mm -hmm. uh, uh, competing in the NCAA tennis tournament. Okay, and I went to see it. I was I was watching it. It was at Notre Dame, and I was in South Bend at the time. And I went to see it with some friends, and we were watching because we liked watching tennis. And it was really cool seeing it live. And he was really good, but before um, John McEnroe yeah. came along and started being behaving, uh, badly. <laughs> behaving badly, Jimmy Connors was the one who behaved badly. And then McEnroe came along and Connors looked mild by comparison. Connors, but, would, Connors would sort of mutter <clears throat> and... And, and say yeah. things over his shoulder to his opponent, whatever. McEnroe practically assaulted line judges. I mean, yes. he yes. would scream at the official. And, and the response to that was people saying, oh, look what a intense competitor. He really wants it. No, look at what an infant infantile yeah. display this is. But yeah. I remember at this NCAA tournament, the athletic director of Notre Dame Ed Moose Kraus, um, who was a huge man. He was a former Notre Dame football player. Huge Go figure, guy. guy nicknamed Moose. Yeah. Yeah. Huge guy. He walked onto the court and he grabbed Connors by the front of his shirt, picked him up, and slammed him against the fence. <laughs> And and okay. loudly enough for us all to hear, 
told him that he better start behaving himself. And then he let him go. <laughs> and Connors won the match, but he was very well behaved after that. Yeah. <laughs> and and we all, everybody applauded. Yeah. People were sick of it. It yeah. was considered unacceptable. Well, there's a lot of, I think, in a sad way, we can tie this trend of behavior to the larger society. And I don't know whether it's a result of or the cause of, or they're both just in step with each other. But I remember years ago, a what passed for a political current events discussion program on television was mostly people shouting at each other. Oh, yeah. And that's been the nature of political discourse. Debates are not debates with people talking over each other. Um, advertise, political advertising, yes, you, you are a bad person. You're saying these untrue things. You're exaggerating. You're taking shit out of context. Yeah, you're you're it's the same same sort of thing. So well, except we don't have there's no unfortunately what you the, the press used to officiate politics. Yeah. Now conflict generates ratings. So we don't want to we don't want civil discourse. We want you know yelling and screaming at each other and name calling and mudslinging because that's that's what people want to watch that's what's exciting that's what people you know show up for and it's it's disheartening in a lot of ways but but we we started seeing that 30 years ago yeah i think that's what people turn off now i think some people want it but i think a lot of people don't i i agree with you i'm waiting for the networks and the um you know, streaming services and whatever to catch up, to realize yeah. that we would, yeah, we, we're a reality TV audience, but there's enough of us left that remember responsible journalism to yeah. say, this is getting us nowhere. Well, and it, it also comes back to a change that, you know, in this ad, this ad where we started talking about this, there was at one point in TV journalism, print journalism, there was a wall between the the reporting, the journalistic side and the revenue side. Yes. Ad sales, they weren't allowed anywhere near the newsroom. They weren't allowed to talk to the the reporters because they were not supposed to have an influence on the reporting well that right. went away that went away a long time ago and yeah. i think for the far for for the worse well there's always been there has always been editorial bias in in journalism particularly in the press in newspapers now back in those days yeah, you could you could identify this is the conservative paper this is the liberal paper these support you could absolutely right. do that but they were but they were mostly confined to editorial articles and they were labeled yes. as such yeah uh, here's here's the editor's take on current events <laughs> right the news is the news and it was used in way it was separated because they expected people to be drawn to the most useful news outlet, right? Yes. So that if you were if you were the most respected newspaper, you got the biggest readership, and therefore you could sell more advertising because you had a bigger readership. Now that's not it. Now you're now you are looking for readers who agree with you, yes, and feeding them. Well, and because the revenue model changed too. Yeah, well, exactly. That, yeah, that, um, yeah, and and 
So first of all, major cities, even smaller ones, often had multiple papers. Yeah, right. There and were they were competing for readership. Right. Now there might be one paper in a in a city. Yeah. Or not even one paper. There might be one online Local. online edition of a larger news service and it's you know got this local city's name slapped on it and a couple of local headlines or yeah. uh, and stories are plugged in there but the rest of it is provided elsewhere is very similar to the way a lot of radio stations are done where yeah, they're really you know, it's a conglomerate yeah there'll be some local news plugged in but all the programming all the music all that stuff is done elsewhere um very similar and the revenue model of news changed uh certainly print journalism changed so that now it's paywalled and for the actual news so there's i i yeah it yeah we're getting we're getting pretty far afield from our talk of we are we are sportsmanships in the olympics yes. but i think it's i think it's part of a the coarsening of discourse and the and the change in what acceptable behavior is, I think, is a larger trend. Well, I think we have, and this is a, a completely American perspective and experience. I think we have always competition is sort of built into our national identity, right? <laughs> Capitalism is competition, or at least it used to be. It's touted as competition. So, and the pioneer spirit and the rugged individualism and all that stuff is about competing against something, whether it's your your neighbor or you or the environment or your circumstances or whatever. You're striving as hard as you can. It it changed from, however, a, a God damn it, I can't get rid of this messenger. Um, uh, it I'm changed. Sorry, I got it changed. Really right. It changed from competing against. Well, it, it became competition and winning was all there was. Winning is what was important. It didn't matter how. Right. Uh, and sportsmanship used to run, it used to be tempered by sportsmanship in print and in movies and in, you know, the good guy wins, but he doesn't kill the bad guy or he saves him from falling off the cliff yeah. at the last second. You know, that was yeah. kind of the 40s and 50s kind he of He wins, model. but he plays within the rules. He's the... Right, he never draws first. Right. He never shoots the bad guy in the back. You know, he shoots the gun out of his hand if he can. It, you know, right. it's so it's always been kind of tempered. And then we saw it kind of at the end of the 60s and 70s, we kind of saw that change. And the, we talked about on, on other episodes, uh, the rise of the anti-hero yeah. in American yeah. culture and how, you know, you need to get you need to be as bad as them if you if if you're going to win. Well, and I it, think that's. Yeah, the difference between, not between Superman and Batman, but between Superman and the Punisher. Yeah, you sure. Know, that's, yeah. Um, and I, I, I will admit to, I mean, I, when High Plains Drifter came out, it was like my favorite movie of all time. Yeah. Clint Eastwood and all, all of that whole spaghetti Western genre of the, the anti-hero he's they're they're all bad guys but the the protagonist is just a little less bad than everybody else so yeah that because it was such a change to, oh this is refreshing this is new this is interesting yeah. and and making you root for a guy who's not that great is a is a bit of cinematic judo and i appreciate yeah. it for what it was but now it's gotten now it's it's now that's it. That's all you can't. Nobody takes 
I loved when Captain America, the first Avenger came out because yeah. that was refreshing against every anti-hero that we've seen for the last 40 years. Yes. Like he's a, he's just a good guy. Yes. He could, he could lift Mjolnir. Yeah. I mean, Christopher Reeve's Superman was also, but it was a little, it was a little campy. And so really yeah. didn't make it into the American consciousness the way yes the marvel universe has yeah um i'm interested to see what this next iteration will be like of superman but but anyway um so back to back to the olympics and then back to the ad i think yeah. that um i i really admire the the skill the dedication of the athletes i really do mm -hmm. um <clears throat> but they're also people and they are there's such pressure on them there's such pressure on them i know that some countries if someone wins a gold medal from that country they're essentially set for life they get yes. an income, they get housing, they get, um, we don't do that here, but somebody wins a gold medal, the likely commercial endorsements will be yes. very beneficial to them um, and very lucrative if they do it correctly. Um, it's a different way of doing it. Um, the, 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 the veneration of this kind of ruthless competition in this commercial misses the point of what these, the dedication that these athletes do, that the real competition, I've heard many of them say it, is, is themselves, is yes. bettering themselves, doing better each time. That's the real competition and um right pushing i mean i get part of it is you're i mean some of the, the things that they quote in this commercial be single-minded um you know they're they're yes they are they are obsessed to get to that level of competition you this is has to be your whole life well and i'm single-minded okay um i'm never satisfied yeah okay i have an obsession with power performance you know i can see that um uh um you know okay those yeah that's focus that's dedication yeah but then i'm deceptive i'm selfish i have no empathy i don't respect you no remorse no, no i'm irrational i have no sense of compassion I think I'm better than everyone else. Right. Yes. Yeah. No, they mixed up the good and the bad. And so put a bad spin on everything. Right. Absolutely terrible. Saying, as long as you, as long as you get to the top, it's okay to be all these things. Is the yes. Message. And I, I think it's horrible. Many, so many years ago, going back to the SCA and our, our martial sport, there was, I had a, uh, a disagreement um, with a, a a fellow, an ally at this large event where multiple kingdoms within the organization are joining to compete against other kingdoms. And we were in a meeting discussing the strategy for the upcoming particular scenario. And this person got up uh, and... <clears throat> Um, suggested cheating. Oh, yeah. As a strategy. Going, it involved, you know, timing and other things. And I said, no, that wouldn't be honorable. And his response was, victory will be our honor. Yeah, we will have the greater, I was there, as you recall. Yeah. We will yeah, have yeah. the greater honor of victory, was his direct And honor. And I said, victory without honor is no victory at all. Mm -hmm. And 
we he was standing but i rose out of my chair and the situation was calmed down but um yeah. if i had been the and we've discussed this before you and i he was not the king at the time his king was there i was disappointed in his king's response making excuses for him rather than dismissing him from the meeting yeah telling you know and telling him to go away and consider what he thinks honor and knighthood is about and i agree <clears throat> uh, there were several other of our brothers there a handful and there was there was a palpable silence every every eye yeah. turned on that guy yes and waited for the punchline waited for the second shoe and nope no, he really said that. And it was, yes. we were, we were dumbfounded. Yes. And, um, it was, it was, it's one of the things that has not only drew me to, but has kept me involved in and interested in the society for creative anachronism is mm -hmm. the absolute commitment to the chivalric virtues yeah agreed yeah, it's absolutely. it is it is one of those things that is by comparison so lacking in so many places well and clearly we've spent six years doing this in an effort to export some of that and 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 if nothing else claim our <laughs> our um adherence to it yes that, that this is important enough to us to talk about it every week yes and, and try and and explain six, why it's important six years yeah six years bro <laughs> wow 2018 wow okay yeah, yeah. we were uh, <laughs> april of 2018 if i'm not well, mistaken cool our first episode yeah um so um i think that i think we've really we've talked about this now and made our positions on it clear and expressed my personal disappointment and profound disappointment in uh whedon and kennedy who are have produced some exceptional advertising over the years and branding for um nike and well you, you're a distinguished author now you should write them a stern letter um i th i think i will write something actually um i don't know i'll write to them but i may i may just post it because well, well, write to them and post what you wrote to them yeah i, I yeah i think so it's so missed the mark. I will, I would, in fact, use this as this is going in. I have a file of bad design examples <laughs> and bad advertising examples. And this is going in that file of bad advertising examples. Good. Um, because it's, yeah, it's terrible. So, but I understand why they, I understand because yeah this is the obsession uh, that people have with winning well and i mean art mirroring life right and yeah. advertising is an art yeah um <clears throat> okay so uh <clears throat> even though the this is going to come out relatively soon i i hope for the sake of its timeliness yeah our next session will also probably have some bearing on the Olympics. Yes. Um, well, and, and larger social issues as well, because yeah. the Olympics seem to reflect that. Um, and we did touch on it with the um, the boxer, the woman boxer who won the gold medal, and the issue of of gender in sports and and really and in society, I think um is is a question that i think 
relates to fairness and also facts. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sure. So, yeah, and it's certainly, I mean, gender in sports is kind of a serious point of contact where. <laughs> And, and we'll, we'll, this is what we'll go into is you can, yeah. you can be anything you want to be. The question is where, where does it overlap with when the, when the, the, when it's a question of competitive fairness, where is the overlap and what is fair? So, and that's a question that people are wrestling with. And yeah. um, so we'll talk about that. So, All right. Okay. So until we do that, yes. Email. Well, no. Oh. no be, until we do that, please like, like, share, share subscribe, um, <clears throat> and uh, suggest things you'd like to talk to us about, like yes. us to talk about, um, and give us a comment on what you thought about what we said. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um. So we have to explain to you why we were right. <laughs> <laughs> so until then, be thou a good night and true.